Okay. Are we... Thank you. Yeah, we have to pivot sometimes with our technology, right? I was like, okay, I'm just not going to wait for my computer any longer. <laughs> uh, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. I'm trying to like, it's weird on your phone because I have to swipe to see you. Hi, now I can see your faces. Um, thank you for being here. I know some people will come watch the replay. Wait. This is looking weird to me. Uh, sorry. I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. Okay. Anyway, my name is Colonna Giuliano, if we haven't met yet. And I'm looking forward to talking about reels because I just think they're a lot of fun. And before we get started, or if anyone's coming back to watch the replay, I know we um, put these up in on a YouTube channel and the recording will be shared in Spruce Society. But if you're here live and you would like to, you know, comment along or raise your hand, I would love some participation just because I'm curious where you guys are at. So use the chat and let me know um, who here has made a reel. And I think a lot of you have, but maybe some people haven't made a reel. Yeah. So if you haven't made a reel, totally fine. Um, I just like to know, you know, you can use the chat and let me know. Um, if you post them regularly, um, type in a one. And if you don't post them regularly, type in a two. I'm just curious. Yeah. So some twos. Yeah. And I've seen you guys post reels. Um, cool. Good to know. So what, you know, what is a reel? Um, I have some notes to keep me on track so I can keep it short for you guys and then have a little Q&A at the end. But a reel is just a short video. And I use Instagram reels, but there are also Facebook reels. And, you know, there's YouTube shorts, which is basically the YouTube version of reels. And really, we're all copying TikTok. So short videos are what has made like the biggest splash on social media. And a couple of years ago, I remember when they announced Reels, I was like, I'm never going to do that. Kind of like, do you remember when they announced Facebook Live? And I remember thinking, that's crazy. Like put your face on camera and talk to people. You know, I'll never do that. And then pretty soon we're all in our education groups like, hey, what's up? So I feel like I did that with Reels at first. I was like, I am not doing that. Um, and it seemed really overwhelming to use the features within Reels. I just thought it was confusing and I just didn't get it. And I just resisted it and thought, I don't need to do that. But what led me to start using Reels was I got COVID and I, I had to cancel a couple trips. Like I missed um, one of the Young Living events where they have um, the Diamonds come up in January and do like a new year kind of kickoff event. I missed that. And I was supposed to do a couple other events in this one period of time. And I was sitting at home in my bed, like so depressed that I couldn't go anywhere. And I was feeling sick. I couldn't teach any classes. And I think it was in like 2021 um, and January or something like that. And I thought, what can I do? Because I'm really happiest, like probably a lot of you, like when I am adding value to other people's lives, I think like that's just something we do, right? And if I couldn't be teaching these classes and sharing what I love, what could I do? And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to like post a picture of the oils I'm using today. And I wasn't saying anything about COVID. I wasn't talking about that. I was more talking about my emotional state. Like, you know, and I just took a picture of the oils in my hand. And for some reason, that post of just a picture of oils in my hand from my bed got a lot of um, likes and comments and shares. And I thought, oh my gosh, what do I do with this? Um, maybe I should start making reels and like kind of keep these people educated because obviously people want to know more about, you know, emotions and oils or what I'm using today. And I was using my, so I have two Instagram accounts. You do not need to have two Instagram accounts. I have a personal account and then I have one called Drop Into Wellness where I talk about oils and young living. Only reason I started that second one was I had a few people on my team that were like, I'm not on Facebook. Like, I'm not going to be looking at Facebook. What else do you have? And I was like, oh, I guess I better have an Instagram presence for like 
people that are younger and think Facebook is for old people. So I started an Instagram account and I barely, you know, oil one and I barely posted on it, but I just thought I would start sharing on there more regularly. And I started doing reels. And I remember people saying, oh, if you post them regularly, you know, you can grow your following and it's what people want to see right now. And I was like, eh, whatever. But I gave it a shot. I like put a filter. You can change the filter on your reels. So I looked a little less deathly. <laughs> I just like dropped some white angelica in my hand, which I do all the time anyway, and like rubbed it on my shoulders and like brushed my energy field. And like so many people enjoyed watching that. I just thought, really? People want to like watch us put our oils on and like talk about what we do. Like I just couldn't believe it. So I challenged myself to do it every day. And then that turned into months and years, really, a couple of years. And I've noticed that since then, if I slack and I stop posting reels, um, there's not as much interaction. So I just want people to know that if you like it and you want to learn something new, it's a great way to share our love of Young Living Oils and products with new people. Because the thing with reels is that's how you reach new people. Like anything you share in your stories is mostly going to be seen by people who follow you, right? But when you do reels, it gets pushed out to like everyone, anywhere, as long as your account is public. And I know that's not comfortable for everyone, so you don't have to do that. But if you make your account a creator account or a business account, you will have um, more of a variety of music to add to your reels. And I'll talk about features in a little bit, but you can play around with different things. And I would say like, I knew nothing in the beginning. I had no idea what I was doing. And I watched a couple of YouTube videos that showed me how to do it. And I would watch them over and over and then I would go try to recreate it. But it just takes like getting into the habit of using the features and then watching what other people do and being like, oh, I'm gonna try something like that. Or I'm gonna save that audio and try that. So um, when I started um, posting reels, I had just under 2,000 followers. And really quickly, I think in like three weeks, I had like 10,000 followers. Maybe that was, you know, luck or a unique situation. I don't know what happened, but I do know that if I post regularly and I'm posting content that people are interested in. So I ask my followers and stories sometimes, like, what do you want to see more of? And I'll like list off, like you can kind of put a little question box and have them type in, or you can do a poll and, you know, DIY, pets, babies, kids, you know, chemical free home, you know, you ask questions and then you give them what they want, you know, and I'll notice that if you're get, if I'm giving them what they want, then it gets shared and there's more views and more likes and more people that I don't know reaching out to me saying, oh, I want to try Ningxia or I want that kit or I want, you know. So um, pretty quickly, the following will grow, I think, if you're consistent and you're providing valuable information for people. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So how do you make a reel? Number one, you record a video on your phone. It could be, you could go through the videos in your phone and use a past video. And the video could be as simple as you like opening a bottle of oil and getting a drop and taking some deep breath from your hands. Like it doesn't need to be some like fancy video. It just needs to be any video. You could use a filter or not. I use Instagram only. I don't use any other um, apps to like edit the videos or anything like that. I just use everything within Instagram. So I usually pull up Instagram and I make my reel right there. But sometimes I'm like, oof, I didn't record anything. I don't have anything. So let me go back into my videos and see if I have something I can use. And then you can just put that in there. The second thing that you'll do, and if you want to use a filter, you can. I think they're kind of fun. Of course, some of them are ridiculous and, you know, they'll make your lips this big and make you have all this eye makeup on and make your nose like narrow. I don't know. So, so you want, I mean, pick a filter that you feel comfortable with. And unfortunately, one of the filters I really loved, like was taken away a couple different times. And so I have to like scramble to find something that looks kind of natural, but kind of brightens the things up. You don't have to, but it's fun if you want to play around with finding a filter that you like. And then, um, you know, our cameras are so great on our phones anyway, 
And there's so many great features, even if you do like a cinematic video on your phone with like the background blurred, that looks really nice too. So you can always do a video like that on your phone and then put that in when you're making your reel. So the second thing after you have a video is you add text. And there's all these different features on, for me, it's on the left side of my phone. When I open up Instagram and I click on reel, it'll give you these different features. I don't really use all the features, but there should be text on the screen because I don't know what percentage, but the majority of people watch reels with no sound. Like they have their sound off on their phone. So they're not going to hear what you're saying or what the audio is saying or what the music is. So you want to have like on the screen in bold, like something to catch their attention right away. And so it could be, you know, this is what oil you might want to use if you want to feel calm before you go to bed tonight, or I don't know, whatever, you know, you can have some, like for me, if I'm sharing a recipe, I'll say DIY bath salts with essential oils. So right away, they know kind of what they're getting themselves into. And then maybe they'll see salts like pouring into a glass, you know, like you want to be doing something because people want to watch you doing something, which is really a bizarre thing to me. But if someone's just standing there, but if they're like, wiping off a mirror you're like oh what are they doing you know so even if you're pouring something people are gonna like stay and watch you pouring and they're gonna read the screen they're like okay diy bath salts okay so um when you add your text instagram has like a new feature where the text looks really nice and bold and you can choose different fonts you just want to make sure that it's um you can read it because if it gets washed out in the background it might not show up as much and then you add music um, one thing I'm going to go back to with when you add text and you start to kind of edit your reel, one thing that's really fun, this kind of an extra thing, but it's up at the top for me of my screen, you can change the speed of your video. So you can speed it up or you can slow it down. And why would you want to do that? Well, A, <laughs> sped up is probably better for a lot of things because people's attention span is like seconds. So even if you're pouring something, like people don't want to watch you pouring it for more than like a second. So I find if I speed it up to like two times, they watch the pour and then they watch the next thing. And, you know, you can edit your video so that it's made in little chunks. So if I was going to be adding sacred frankincense to a roller, I would like press two times and then I would record a quick video of me dropping it. And then I would stop the video. And then in the next recording, I'd be pouring carrier oil in. So you make it in like little chunks. So it's like, no one's watching you like put the cap back on and you know, cause then they're gone. <laughs> they're like scrolling to the next thing. So make it quick. Um, and you can use that two times feature. The other really fun thing about the two times feature is it's sped up, but it slows down the audio. So, and this might be like old school or maybe people aren't doing this as much. I think it's fun. But if you find an audio where someone is talking and it's catchy or funny and you want to lip sync it, if you put two times, it actually slows down the audio so you can actually say it along with them when you're recording your video. That's like advanced. You can play around with it or you can just if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Or you can always Google it. Like if you see something that someone does and you're like, what, how'd they do that? Literally type in like, how do I lip sync whatever on reels? And you'll get a YouTube video of someone like doing a tutorial. That's how I learned everything. <laughs> like, I don't know how to, I did not have anyone sit down with me. I just figured it out trial and error and watching other people um, do these little tutorials. So that's the little features. And sometimes it's really fun to slow something down. Like if you're mixing something with blue tansy and it's like the colors are all crazy and cool, you know, you're like, you know, slow it down to 0.5 and it looks amazing. Um, and then, so number three will be that you add music. How do you know what music to add? I don't know. There's lots of different, like, I don't, I'm not like an influencer. I'm not um, a social media guru. But what I have noticed is that sometimes trending audio, like something that is what they call trending, will tend to get your real more views. If you're teaching something interesting that your people want to see and you have all the other things going, I don't think trending audio alone is going to help you out that much. But what it is and how to know if something is trending 
if you go to the reels section on your phone and you just start scrolling Instagram reels, you're just watching other people's reels, you'll see in the bottom left the song or the audio, and it'll have a little arrow if it's trending. And that just means that it has lower views. I don't know if it's like less than 5,000 or something like that. And that just means that it hasn't gone viral yet. And there's more of a chance, but it's starting to get shared really fast. So there's more of a chance of that audio getting big and maybe your reel is going to get pushed out to more people. So something to consider. I personally would choose audio or music that you just like or that goes along with your video. Like if I'm making bath salts, I'm probably not going to have like death metal or rap. I'm probably going to have something like soothing and relaxing or a song I like or something, you know? So I don't know. I think the music is just intuitive. So find music you like and how do you find it? You can just press a little music icon and start, you know, you can either type in a specific song once you're in the reels part of your phone and you can search for something, you know, if you want to hear Fleetwood Mac or something and come up with all Fleetwood Mac songs, or you can just kind of search around in there and it'll tell you, you know, different original audio and different music. And you can save music too. When you find something you like, you can just tap on it and you can save it. And then when you go to make your reel, you can see what you have saved and what goes along with your reel. So number four in how to make a reel is to write a caption. And again, I don't know how many people read the captions because attention spans pretty short. I sometimes take a lot of time to write my captions and I like write this big long thing. A lot of times what I'll do though is I'll take something out of Life Steps and I'll edit it or I will give Life Steps credit for it. I'll say at the bottom like this is from the Life Steps app, you know, or I'll take it out of an education group from a post that I've already done where I'm talking about something that I've already made and I'm making a video about something. You know, most of the things we do, we do like every day. We've done it before, we've talked about it before. So I either save in the notes section of my phone or I go to the group and I kind of look for something. So the caption, you definitely wanna have some valuable information about what your video is about. Maybe even just reiterating the bath salts recipe or the benefits of bath salts. And the very first line of your caption, so the writing below the video will be visible. So like the first maybe five words or something. And I have heard that you want those first few words of your caption to be something that pulls them in, like they want to go read your caption. For one, if they're reading your caption, your reel is playing in the background, it's getting more views, which means it gets pushed out to more people. And the longer someone spends kind of paying attention to your content, the better. So, and I just like, my intention is always to like give people something valuable, right? Um, I mean, likes and views are great, but really we want to add value to people so that they order Young Living products from us and experience the benefits for themselves. So the intention behind it is, you know, important, but I like to kind of think of something, even if it's like, check out these benefits with an arrow or a finger pointing down or something like that. And then you talk about the benefits of an Epsom salt bath and you talk about, you know, whatever Epsom salts do and whatever the oils that you put in there do. So people are like, Ooh, yeah, I need to do some self-care, you know, or why you want to take a bath with these or whatever. So something catchy, some valuable information, hashtags. It sounds like are, they don't matter anymore. According to a lot of people, I'm just used to putting them in. So I still add some hashtags. What's a hashtag? It's just basically keywords so that if someone was searching for whatever you're talking about, your content might pop up. Um, so, you know, you could hashtag bath salts, hashtag essential oils, hashtag lavender, whatever, you know, something that's related to your content. But don't take too much time on that because it sounds like it doesn't really help anymore. It used to be a helpful thing. Um, and then one thing that's helpful in your caption is to have something that's a call to action. And the call to action could be, follow me for more tips on how to make, you know, DIY things with essential oils, or it could be save this so you can try it or share this if you find this valuable or comment below if you're ready to order what you need to make these bath salts, you know, comment with a heart or whatever, you know, so you're asking them to do something like you want to provide information and then you want them to do something. So think about what that is. You don't always have to be trying to sell them something in every post. Sometimes you're just asking them to save it or tag a friend or 
share it or, you know, drop a heart in the comments below if you're going to make this tonight or something, you know, um, I think that's a really important thing. And your call to action could not only be in the caption that you write below your reel, could also be on the screen in your reel. So maybe during the video of you making your bath salts, it says, DIY bath salts. And then as you're adding the oils, it's like frankincense, lavender. And across the screen, it's saying 10 drops of lavender, five drops of frankincense, like one cup of Epsom salts, half cup of baking soda. And then at the end, it says, you know, comment below salts if you want the essential oils and I'll send you a link or something like that. You know what I mean? So you're saying it right in the caption of the reel. So they get to the end of it and then they're like, you know, salts, like they want the recipe, you know, they want to order the oils to make the salts or whatever. So you can either do it in the caption or in the, you know, on the screen or both, because we want people to be, to see that not only did they just learn why they want to, you know, take a bath with these oils and another way to use them, but if they don't have them yet, we want to be the person to give them, you know, access to your link. And Let's see. Number five is you can tag people. You could tag, you know, for me, I have those two accounts, which again, I'm not recommending you have separate accounts. If you have one Instagram account where you talk about, you know, your family and, you know, you're also talking about Young Living, then some of your reels are going to be your family vacation and some of them are going to be you making your, you know, DIY bath salts or whatever you do with your oils. And that's fine. But you can tag yourself or you can tag someone else. And you can also do something called collaborate. So if I, for example, am doing some retreats with someone who has a house in Mexico and has women's retreats, and she's asked me to come down and start bringing essential oils and doing essential oil workshops during her women's healthcare retreats or self-care retreats. So I collaborate with her on reels sometimes because if we are together and she's talking about women's retreats and I'm talking about oils, then it pushes out that to all of the people that want retreats and all of the people that want oils. So it's a way to like reach more people. And maybe if, you know, you can think about different people that you use oils, but also, you know, like Karen's a chiropractor. So maybe she tags another chiropractor friend to be a collaborator. And it's saying, you know, this is how chiropractic and oils work together or something, you know, does that make sense? So there's, you can use collaborator feature to just reach more people. So that's another fun thing to do. And then some pro tips. So I have some pro tips and then we'll do a Q and A because I don't know, this is so easy. I mean, it's a little technical, but it's a free way to get in front of a lot of people. And so that's why I love talking about it. And I just, I've just found it fun. So if you find it fun, then do it. If you don't, then don't like, don't make it fun, make it fun, whatever that is for you. You can find a style or a way of doing them where you're providing value and it makes you feel good. So some pro tips, if possible, post regularly, daily, if you can, and around the same time of day, this is something great that I heard someone say, your reels are almost like a TV show. So people have pretty regular routines of, you know, looking at their phone before they go to bed or when they wake up in the morning or at their lunch break. So when they pick up their phone, if every day at noon, you're posting a reel and that just happens to be around the time they pick it up, they're going to, so your regular followers are going to expect it. And Instagram likes that regularity of your TV show, you know? So if you think of your reels as like a show, people expect you to be there. They want to watch it. And then it also pushes it out to more people when you're regular with it. I am not always the same time. I try to do it every day when I'm on my game because I do notice it kind of building um, traction. And the other thing that happened with me, which maybe it's unique, but Instagram reached out to me and was like, hey, we're going to pay you to make reels. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought it was like a scam or like a joke or something. But it happened, um, I think it was like the year before last. And every month I got like, it wasn't a ton of money, but I got like 150 bucks deposited in my bank account from Instagram just for making reels that I was already making because they just want people to make reels. I don't get it, but I'm like, okay, you can pay me to do what I'm already doing. So that just made it more. And, you know, if I were to make like three a day or if they were to go viral or something, you know, you get paid more. I was still making one a day, but um that encouraged me to keep making them too. Cause I was like, oh, I'm getting a little kickback from Instagram. So that's a possibility. And then they have something now called subscriptions where people pay 
to get extra information from you. And so now I get, I have people that subscribe to me. I mean, obviously my team and my people that I'm connected with, I don't want them to think they have to pay, but there's a lot of people out there that will pay to learn extra info from you. And, you know, you can decide how much that subscription is. So it's interesting to me that there's just a lot of ways to make money. And if you're already doing this anyway, and Instagram's offering to pay you, it's like, why not? So that's kind of cool. Um, but I kind of mentioned this before too, but the next pro tip is we're showing up to add value. So you want to, you know, we want to make sure that when we do put our face, you know, in our camera, we're deciding what we're going to teach people about that. We're thinking about three things. We're either providing entertainment. So sometimes we just have to be silly. Karen, you're good at that with your little skeleton, you know, <laughs> um, she does these great little reels with um, Stanley, her skeleton, and she talks about chiropractic and just jokes, you know? So sometimes people just, they just want entertainment. So entertainment, educate, like we want to be adding value, like teaching somebody something. And it doesn't need to be some big, fancy, crazy sesquiterpene thing. It could just be like, when I put this on my feet before I go to sleep, I am so relaxed that I don't get up all night or whatever, you know, whatever it is that's true for you. So you're educating or you're inspiring. Like what would inspire someone today? You know, I mean, whatever you're doing that is uplifting and helping you feel healthy or whatever it is. So keeping those three things in mind when you are deciding, you know, what you're going to share, I think is, is important. And one thing I like to think about too, is like, how do we want to make people feel, you know? Like, how do I want people to feel when I see this? I want people to feel like warm and fuzzy or like, you know, inspired or joyful or, you know, you want them to laugh or smile or, you know, think you're being silly or whatever. Um, so I want people to feel uplifted. And oftentimes I just want people honestly to see how fun and easy it is to use Young Living and to switch to like more chemical free home, because I think that's overwhelming for a lot of people. And so one of the things that I say a lot, like you can say and do things over and over. And I say like, follow drop into wellness for more fun and easy ideas on how to use your oil. So you can come up with something that you want to be kind of known for. And then you just say it over and over. And that's your intention, you know, whatever that is. Um, next is you can pin a few of your reels. There is a feature where you can have them stay at the top. So when people... Maybe they come across your reel and they're like, whoa, what's this person all about? And they go to your account, they'll see. So I have three at the top of mine and you could do one, two or three, but they're pinned. So they always stay at the top and then all your most current reels kind of go in chronological order. But, you know, one of them should be about who you are and what you do. So, you know, it, it just introduces you a little bit. So people can right away see, hopefully from your profile, who you are and what you do. You should have a clear picture, a clear name. You know, you want your face uh, as your profile picture. Um, you want, you know, your actual name. And even if your Instagram name is something else, you want your name so they know who you are. And then, you know, it should just say exactly what you do and who you are in a couple little words. And then have those pinned, you know, reels or posts at the top that explain who you are. I think that's really helpful. So people feel like they know you because, you know, you want people to feel like they know you and, you know, they like you and they trust you. And that makes people want to order from you. So just being very clear about who you are and, and what you do. And then um, what's next? Uh, film your reels in natural light. So like right now I'm in front of a window and this is a time of day where like the sun for me is setting over here in the West. And I will often film my reels this time of day, like a couple hours before the sun sets, because the lighting is really beautiful. And I have all these windows. I'm in my bedroom right now. I'm hiding in my bedroom because um, families, you know, kids are downstairs and stuff. But I have all these nice windows. And so I'll sit, stand or sit right in front of the windows and either make something or show my face or whatever. But if you can be in front of a window, what happens, not only you look more clear, but Instagram likes the more clear and the more bright your video is, the more people they push it out to. If it's a dark kind of eerie video, they don't like that. And it just won't get pushed out to as many people. Um, and you can use a ring light, you know, if you don't have a spot or nice lighting in your home, or you're not always able to do that, you can buy like a ring light 
I don't have any I recommend. Honestly, the few I've bought have like broke off. <laughs> like They're terrible. Even um, one of my tips, actually, maybe my next tip is to get a tripod. I don't have one that I recommend. I've probably bought like four off Amazon and the legs break and they're not great. So if you have a good tripod that you love, let me know. I have like a tall one that I, it's okay, but one of the legs broke. Um, and then I have like a little one, you know, that I can kind of put, you know, so I don't know, find a tripod though. So you can put your camera up and, you know, you want to be facing the window. So your camera is facing you, but your face is facing the window. So you have the light on you or whatever you're doing. That's a really, really important tip. Um, and then, you know, I mean, scroll reels, like I said, and just save audio that you like. Um, because that makes it more fun if you're like, oh, I like this song or that's catchy or whatever. So just have a bunch of saved audio. And then when you're ready to make your reel, you can look through them. Um, keep your reels short. That's the next tip. Some of mine go a little long and maybe people don't watch the whole thing, but they should be engaging and short. They say seven seconds. It's like the average time that someone's going to spend watching. So that's pretty short. I mean, it's crazy, but to the short ones usually get the most views. And then um, the last tip is engage with your audience in your stories. So once a lot of times when people, and maybe you do this too, when you watch someone's reel and then you're like, oh, this person's interesting, you go to their page. And then oftentimes I'll go to their stories. Like, do you guys do that? Do you go check out, like if you're looking at a new person you've never interacted with before and you can see if they've posted stories cause they'll be like a little pink ring around their profile picture. So you click on it. And then you want to see like who this person is or see, see something. So one thing you can do is share your reels to your story. So there's another place that people could, you know, find the reel. But then also just ask a question. Like a little while ago, I just, my diffuser looked pretty in my kitchen and I was making dinner and I was like, I'm going to take a picture of my Aria because Aria is just pretty and tell people what I'm diffusing today. But instead of just taking a picture, I did a boomerang and I asked a question like, want to see a new diffuser blend? You know, and of course, anyone that's interested in oil is going to be like, yes. You know, you slide the little heart faith over like, yes. And then um, and then the next slide says, oh, it's, you know, peppermint and spearmint or whatever. You know, it's simple, but people want to tap and slide and interact. So give them the opportunity to do that. And you can show your face and you can talk to people and, you know, get to know people. They can get to know you there more in your in your stories. So. That is about all that I have, and I would love to hear any um, questions or comments or anything anyone has to share. Go I have ahead. A question. So um, there are times when I'll pick certain music, and then I'll get a notice. You know, they give you the list of songs, and I'll pick a song, and you get a notice that says oh, that music is something proprietary. I don't even remember what it says. I think the reels still play. I don't know how you can tell when they give you the list of songs and I just pick a song. Have you ever had that happen, Kelowna, where you'll pick music and then it'll come back and afterwards and say, mm, I don't think we want you to use this. I had some weird stuff happen with the music a while back and I Googled whatever it was. So I would do that and see what comes up. But for me, I had to switch my account type. And I think I switched it from business or from, I don't know what it was, to a creator. I think creator and business are the two types that will give you the most option for audio. And I don't know why that is, but all of a sudden I felt like I had no options for like, I had really bad audio and music choices. And I was like, what is going on? But it was a switch that happened within Instagram where it like took it away. But I don't remember that specific message, but I would Google it and just see like what it tells you to do. Cause I just did what it told me to. And then I had access to all the music again. I'll have to do that the next, I wonder if it said something about copyright or something. You know, I can't remember. I just kind of, um, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I made my, my reel. I'm done. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Uh, well, one thing that I have seen happen quite frequently, actually, if I start scrolling through my old reels, 
it'll say this audio is no longer available. Do you want to replace it? And so then you have an option to like add some other music to it because that music is whatever copyrighted or gone. So I have seen that. Um, it, uh, yeah. So okay. Google it. <laughs> GTS, Google that shit, right? <laughs> you know, when I watch your reels, you are so happy. And I think it's very attracting. You're happy, you dance. And you know me, I'm pretty happy and light, but on my reels, I feel like I'm not. So I think I'm going to take all of your reels and I'm going to lip sync to them. <laughs> do it. Copy it. Yeah. I mean, just do the same thing or whatever. One thing I saw recently that I thought was interesting along those lines is it's almost like you're acting and you have to be more exaggerated. I'm a pretty like calm person, but you have to be a little more exaggerated. And I remember like reading that or hearing that and thinking, oh yeah, you feel like you're being kind of dorky. But then if it's quick and it's short and it's inform you know information people want to hear and it's got fun music to it, even though you're standing there doing something silly, people want to watch that. If that's what you have to do to tell someone the benefits of sacred frankincense, like I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like just you got to be using this every day. You know what I mean? Whatever it takes. But thank you. That's funny. <laughs> Good feedback. <laughs> But people do want to see you happy and smiling and um, but not just like, you know, like standing there being, you know, do you, you want to be providing value at the same time that you're dancing around the room, I guess. You know? <laughs> but there's plenty of people that just stand there and dance like Brian Martin, and he's amazing. Everyone loves him. And that's how he's built his following, you know, so you have to find something that brings you joy. And, you know, I mean, talking about oils does bring me joy and I want people to know about it. So I try to make that come through. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions or comments? Don't be shy or you can type them in the chat. My uh, looks weird. I'm usually on Zoom from my computer. So anyway, all right, well, I think that's all. I know that was a lot of information. Um, I would challenge you since you're here and you're listening to this, whether you're listening to it live or you're coming back, I would challenge you to make a reel in the next 24 hours and incorporate something new that you learned. Even if it's your first reel ever and you have no idea what you're doing, just tell yourself you're going to do one and it's just going to be what it is. And, um, send me a message when you do it and I'm going to come watch your reel. <laughs> I would love, I love, love, love. Um, I think it's such a great way to learn information and to share what we do just to, you know, even, I mean, a lot of people that follow me already use Young Living, you know, and there I've, I've gotten messages and that say things like, I had my oils sitting on a shelf for years and I had stopped using them. And I started watching your reels and you've inspired me to pull them out and start using them again. And, you know, I'm, and I'm, you know, very respectful to tell people, like if they reach out and they say they want my link, I, I always say, do you have an account with Young Living? You know, and if they're like, oh yeah, you know, I used to or whatever. I'm like, okay, you can, you know, reactivate under your previous enroller. Or you can place an order with whoever you started with. Like I always send people back, you know, to their person, but I, I just enjoy providing the information for people, even if they're already using Young Living, because a lot of people aren't using their stuff or they get out of the habit. So I feel like if anything, you know, you're providing information that helps all of us, you know, all of Young Living is being helped by us sharing about using Thieves Cleaner, you know, or whatever it is. So, um, but there are a lot of people out there that I find that use other brands of oils or they grabbed an oil retail from someone 10 years ago and they like, I don't know who they were. They were someone that I went to once and I bought an oil off their shelf and I'm not in connection with them anymore. And I'm like, okay, you know, like, yeah, here's my link, you know, or people that say, oh, I used to use such and such brand, but I'm watching your reels and I'm learning. I think I want to use these seed to seal oils. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> or I used to use oils from the health food store. Or, you know, there's so many people out there that are finding these reels and learning that don't have accounts with Young Living. So 
I encourage you to go make your reel in the next 24 hours and send me a message so I can come watch it. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Thank you for being here and I will see you all later.